All right, we're live. Welcome to another edition of Elevate Your Grind brought to you by the Cannabis Lab. I am your host, Todd Rosales. Uh, man, it feels like it's been forever since I've been behind this microphone. I don't know why. It was just Friday that we were here with Shada Tarabi, and we did two episodes last week. But I guess when we go from doing four or five to eight a week down to one or two, it feels like we're not doing this often, but at least we've got a great quality of guests for you guys. Um, next week, we're going to have Lawrence Hallwood. Oh, Lawrence, sorry. Lawrence Horowitz from, dude, I can't say your name and your company together for some reason. It's a tongue twister. Let's try this again. Lawrence Horowitz from Entourage Effect Capital. Looking forward to speaking to him. But today's guest has been a friend of mine for at least the past year and eight months, we'll call it. Um, this gentleman and, and his partner slash dad, we'll call it, uh, are the first people that I met in the cannabis industry, my first friends in the industry, and the first people to welcome me into C-Lab. I'm very excited to have them. They were on the podcast back in the beginning, way back when we first started, and that was back when I tried to pretend I was a subject matter expert and got people to think that I knew what I was talking about. I've since realized that I know nothing, and it's a lot easier for me to just educate myself with the awesome guests that we have here. So these guys have been in the business for a very long time, at least since 2017. They're involved in every different entity. They're part of the NCIA. They're on the board for Cannabis Lab. They've helped build a lot of our panels. They're very well connected. And honestly, they're some of the people I go to when I'm looking for insights into the industry. A lot of the rants that you hear me go on in the soapboxes I've had, I've actually stolen from them and used them as my own, but that's the first time today I'm admitting it to them. So Without further ado, and we'll get into the background and everything else after that, please welcome my friends from S2S Insurance, David and Eric Ron. Gentlemen, thank you for joining. Hi, guys. Greetings. Absolutely. Nice to see you all. We're really excited to be here. Um, we love C-Lab. We love, we love Elevate Your Grind. We listen to it almost every week, and it is just so much fun to get that sort of take and that sort of spin on the industry. Well, I mean, you guys were right there at the beginning when we recorded the first episode in my hotel room up at NCIA, still trying to figure everything out. <laughs> it was wires everywhere. Wires everywhere, Why? but look how much it's grown. It's it has. We're 80 so episodes later, and you guys are only the second time we've repeated a guest. So I'm very glad that you're here because I've learned a lot about the industry from you guys. First time around... I didn't, I don't understand insurance as it is, right? So I tried asking you guys some questions on your insights and everything else, but we didn't really dig deep into what you guys actually do. And I wanted to make sure that we did that, right? You guys are friends of mine, you are big supporters of C-Lab. And I think a lot of people need, the people who are, I think a lot of people are aware of who you guys are and what you do, but for people who don't, this is gonna be a very educational episode and I'm very excited for it. Everybody who watches this show knows I love to learn. Um, this is what we're gonna do today. So guys, Let's start out easy here, right? We're looking at the business world. In the standard business world, business insurance, health insurance, all that stuff is pretty standard. The cannabis industry kind of is nascent, right? Things, standard practices have not really been established across the board. People are starting to get more mature and everything else. So if I'm a hemp or a cannabis business, what, what am I looking for from an insurance standpoint? And honestly, what do I need? Why do I need insurance? What am I protecting? Well, for any business, insurance really is one of the pillars um, of any industry. I mean, look at it. You have homeowner's insurance for your house. You have auto insurance for your automobiles and your modes of transportation. You have health insurance for yourself. I mean, all of those things are an insuring agreement that if you have any sort of claim or any sort of problem, the insurance company is there to record that claim calc and then calculate how much you are needed to indemnify your claim, meaning how much money will it take to make uh, everything back, almost as back to normal again. Now, especially in the cannabis industry, you know, you're going to see a lot of contractual agreements. You're gonna- So if you have a lease, if you have a partnership agreement, if you have a licensing agreement to produce a brand. All these leases and contracts all have insurance clauses in them, which require the company to provide each other with certain coverages. 
to protect themselves in case something goes wrong. And that's what insurance is. It's shifting risk to somebody else who's going to pay you and make you whole if you should have a loss. Now, how would you insurance company do this? It sounds like it's almost some sort of ambiguous concept that you can figure out how much money you need to give a person, even though you weren't there to experience or to witness that claim. Now, insurance carriers use something called the law of large numbers, and they predict that the ratio from actual loss to expected loss is almost one to one. Now, what we like to do is we help our clients find the right coverages that are specifically geared toward them so that they make sure that if, God forbid, they were ever to have a claim, like their building was supposed to burn down, or they had a problem with one of their employers or one of their employees, they'll be covered against any sort of risk, whether it be through financial indemnity or legal assistance, legal, legal defense. Um, that's what insurance is there for. And so with S2S and what we provide is old school, new school. So you got a guy who's been in business for, you know, close to 30 years, in various industries, uh, and has represents insurance in different other industries. And Dave, who has love of uh, cannabis and the cannabis world, we combine forces, and so we provide a lot of personal service with uh, with the services we provide. So I'm, I'm a little off note here. I'm going to guess that Dave's the one that dragged you into the cannabis space. No, that's not true. It was, it oh, was man. very look at me stereotyping. Well, appreciation for a very beneficial plant. So. I got dragged into this back in 2014. A friend of mine called and said, come up to Portland, Oregon. I have a piece of business I wanna share with you. And so I went up to see him and lo and behold, the cannabis industry was just emerging up there and they just had formed a public company and they needed all sorts of insurance. And I went digging and scratching and after kissing a lot of uh, frogs, found a prince and found a company willing to underwrite them and placed my first piece of business. And then from there, I fell in love with the industry and Dave came to work and, you know, it's been a nice partnership ever since. Yeah, I, I had a brief foray in the insurance claims um, operation before getting back onto the brokerage side. And um, I was a claims adjuster. And what a claims adjuster is, is that once the claim has been filed from the insurance carrier, meaning that you took all the pictures, you recorded everything down about what happened, where it happened, when it happened, and uh, presumably how it happened or why it happened, and then you submit that information uh, to your broker, you review it together, you make sure that you know, your claim is covered under your insurance policy, and then that's when uh, the broker submits the first notice of claim to the insurance carrier. So here's so what happens. Let, 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 let's, let's back up a second here, right? Because I want to dig into the claims process a little more. I think when a lot of people look at insurance, some people are, especially in this industry, they're risk takers, right? And they just think it's kind of a in case shit happens type thing. And some people might look at it and say, you know what, I might take my chances, right? But let's peel back the onion and go through that claims process, right? So let's actually talk about if someone has insurance, how they can utilize that and the benefits that come from it. So Dave, you were saying that you were a claims adjuster. I'm sure you're very familiar with this, Eric, not, not that you aren't, but he's the one who, who popped out as a claims adjuster first. So take us through that process as so people can understand if you have insurance, this is how it's going to work. And these are the benefits you're going to right. get from it. So, um, oh no, you had a claim. So you need use to an, use an example. So let's, let's say, use this example. Let's use a great example. Let's I, say I'll you, give you the okay. example. You tell me what I should do. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, I'm this a, should be fun. I'm a processor. Okay. And I white label my oil to a lot of different brands and under licensing agreements. 
And one of my brands comes back to me and sues me because their product was taken off the shelf because it failed its state certification test. I get served with a lawsuit. Now what do I do, Dave? So now that you have that potential lawsuit on your hands, you're going to want to do a lot of different things. You want to record and you want to collect and you want to share the information that you've either gotten from your, from your business to the, um, to the plaintiff party, if you will, the claimant party. Well, first of all, you want to collect all your data. Yeah, you're collecting all of your data. So you want to get the test reports on that particular batch that they're claiming was defective. You want to go through all your chain of control and you want to document what you did. And then in to all that, the while you're trying to schedule when you're going to uh, enforce your product recall protocol and get all those and get that product removed off the shelf. So it can't be sold anymore. So more people can't get hurt. Correct. And then also in product liability claims, there's a health hazard uh, exemption. And I'll get into that in a moment, but basically what will happen is you'll file a claim with your, uh, your insurance carrier. That insurance carrier is going to read the lawsuit. They're going to see how it is applied to your policy and they're going to come back to you with what's called a reservation of rights letter. And in that reservation of rights letter, they're going to say one of two things. One, no, we're going to decline this claim because it doesn't fall within the confines of the policy or we're going to accept this claim and they're going to spell out exactly where in the policy and the policy language it applies to and what they're willing to do for you in the beginning uh, process of this claim. And most, and the first thing they do is they'll appoint legal representation. In other words, they'll put up the money for you to fight the claim in court or until it settles out of court. So normally what happens is the insurance company appoints an attorney, the attorney now takes over the case and then becomes a case of lawyer to lawyer within the court system. And unfortunately, as we uh, all know, it takes a long time for these insurance claims to get processed and paid. Uh, sometimes they're a lot quicker uh, if the parties are willing to settle. So that's basically how the claims process works. And also including within that claims process um, comes, comes somebody like me or what I used to do, uh, which is a claims adjuster. A claims adjuster is either somebody who is contracted by the insurance carrier or is an independent entity and their job is to record, collect, interview people, making sure that they can gather as much data about this claim and submit it to the insurance company so that the insurance company has all the right pertinent data to uh, spell out how much money or what they're going to do as far as this claim being paid out. So it sounds complicated. It really isn't. There's yeah. really streamlined processes to it. The real issue here is we help you manage that claim from beginning to end. And, and what you get with us is we're just, you know, we hold your hand through the whole process from the underwriting. We learn all about your business. And that's the fun part for us. You know, we handle everything from cultivators to processors to labs. We do a lot with labs, uh, terpene, uh, uh, biogenesis, uh, <laughs> a lot. You guys have seen it all. Are, lot, are in there. A, a lot of uh, doctors who are doing medical referrals, brands. Uh, we deal with a lot of multi-state operators. Research facilities so, and institutions. And it's really been interesting because we've really learned this emerging industry, and it really is an emerging industry from the bottom up. And there isn't a day that goes by that somebody isn't doing something exciting and different in this business. So with that I mean, being said, <laughs> we're doing a lot of different things from the traditional uh, insurance broker. And so 
the, those are the kind of things we want to talk about tonight. No, absolutely. I mean, I've seen it firsthand. I haven't gone to a conference that I haven't run into you guys at. I haven't seen a committee that you're not on and I haven't been able to mention an article or talk about a trend in the industry that you guys aren't aware of, right? So I've experienced it firsthand. Before we get into my next question, I'm really curious because you had mentioned kind of the acclaims process there. Now, this is just something I'm very curious about. There's been a lot of false confiscations lately, right? In Massachusetts during the vape crisis, you know, there's one company that had over $2 million worth of product that was taken off the shelves and never returned to them. And once it was returned, they couldn't sell it anymore. We've seen it in the hemp industry where is there, are there, do you guys work with any policies or any kind of packages that would actually help out in that scenario? Cause I imagine that somebody would rather much rather pay an insurance premium than lose potentially lose $2 million worth of product. I know it's kind of a gray area cause it was a government thing, but I'm just really curious if that's something that is being addressed. So the things that we're starting to see, especially in the hemp industry, is cargo throughput, where you can insure your cargo uh, through interstate commerce. And that's something that, uh, you know, the big issue was testing hemp versus cannabis. And what we're seeing is a lot of confiscation because the, the troopers on the side of the road couldn't determine whether it was hemp or cannabis. And so until they could figure that out and get the lab report, they would confiscate the trailers. And, you know, so yes, you can ensure your, your loads uh, all the way from warehouse to warehouse or from when title passes from uh, seller to buyer. Um, some of the other things we're seeing is product, uh, a lot of product liability in the CBD world. The FDA is now getting, uh, you know, issuing letters and putting more restrictions on how you're able to advertise your CBD products. And that's a topic for a whole nother, con another conversation. Just, but mainly just to simplify things and for people who are also asking that similar question out there. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, there really is no insurance policy to cover you against a either a seizure or some sort of raid, either by federal, state, or local law enforcement or government. Um, those are usually exclusions. Those are very much excluded on many policies. And basically, most of these policies follow the outline of your state licensing requirements. So if you're in violation of your license under the state regulations, your policy becomes null and void and won't apply to whatever particular laws you have. And unfortunately, you know, until regulations are put into place, safe, like safe banking, uh, more act. More, the MORE Act, uh, act. We're not, we'll be able to broaden the coverages. Absolutely. Once, you know, we get some better laws on the books. But until uh -huh. then, we're, we're in state regulated territory dealing with surplus lines insurance companies. I'm sure that's all very exciting to see what, what's new on the horizon as regulations start to get pulled back. You know, listen, there's a lot of insurance companies out there. I know the advantage of working with S2S because I know you guys well. And like I said, I'm going to go out and state, I believe the advantage of working with S2S instead of a, your standard insurance guy is the fact that you guys are so knowledgeable about the industry because you have to be, right? Like you just said, most policies follow the local state regulations We've got what, between 34 and 38 states, and I'm only saying that because I haven't looked it up in a while, right? That are, those are 34 to 38 markets that you guys have to understand, know the regulations, know the policies and everything else. So you're very knowledgeable, but you know, asking you guys in your own words, what are your advantages over the rest of the insurance world and why are you guys everywhere? Why am I seeing S2S more than anybody else? It's, I mean, there definitely are a lot of nuances to providing insurance to the cannabis and hemp industry. Um, we see it every day, you know, cannabis and hemp, well, cannabis more, more so, um, has a lot of restrictions to it. It is federally regulated as a Schedule One substance. Um, a lot of insurance carriers will not, especially the insurance carriers that you see nationwide, will not provide insurance products 
because they follow the federal guidelines. They don't follow each and every state guideline. There are certain insurance companies that do, and they have different policies, and there are different insurance carriers that provide this sort of coverage um, for these businesses, whether it be from a traditional insurance standpoint or from some sort of alternative risk solution um, that we also do provide. So what? Okay. I got it. Go ahead. No, I. So let's let's put a pin in this one. I'm gonna let you go first, but I don't know what the hell an alternative risk solution is. So we're gonna have to go into that. But Eric, you go first, and then I'm gonna ask my question again. Well, maybe I can help you with a question. The reason I got Please. into this is I I was an insurance broker who specialized in hard to place insurances, and that's what I built my career on. So when I so being an insurance broker hurt. wasn't hard enough for you. You wanted to do the hard stuff. Got it. <laughs> exactly. That's where the that's where the fun is. Uh, so we've had to explore alternative risk solutions for the industry because some of these policies are just outrageously expensive, and there's alternative ways of insuring a risk without buying traditional insurance, where you pay an insurance company a fixed premium for a chance to get your up to a certain limit back for your loss. Alternative risk solutions are different programs, and we're going to get into two in a moment, um, of how you can ensure your risk and bet on yourself or take a lion's share of the risk and lay off the higher end portion of the risk in case of a catastrophe. So those are the kind of things we like to look at and advise our clients with. So with that being said, go ahead, ask your question. Yeah, so I kind of am starting to get it now, alternative risk solutions. To me, it seems like you guys are just geniuses at finding something that's going to benefit your clients from an insurance standpoint, um, you know, just figuring out what's out there. But yeah, what explain to me as a simpleton, as I am, what an alternative risk solution is. So one great alternative risk solution that is something that we're definitely promoting this year and something that is definitely new to the cannabis industry. Is something and, and hemp. And hemp. I can't forget about cannabis and hemp. I always got to put them together and I always forget sometimes. Well, we, we know what you're a fan of. That's why. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and that would be something called parametric insurance. Now, Same question. What is that? Simple. So parametric insurance is a different kind of insurance product that guarantees a payout um, no matter the level of catastrophe you experience within your claim because that policy follows certain parameters based off of an index. So instead of um, actuarial data, Farmer's Almanac, you know, let's talk, talk about the crop, uh, in, uh, cannabis crops. Um, they follow a lot of actuarial data, uh, Farmer's Almanac, previous crop data. That's all called actuarial data, which is something that has happened in the past that could probably relate to something in the future. What parametric right. insurance does is that it's very real time. So they're going about using real time data through things like hail sensors and weather satellites and um, well, weather cool. system to determine if there was a certain amount of, if there was a claim and how much they, sh they should pay out for the claim. So let's use a real time right. example here. So uh, we'll, we'll make this real simple. You're in Colorado, you have 80 acres of hemp. You haven't been able to buy crop insurance for an outdoor grow. It's a problem. So Parametric insurance, what we do is we get the exact uh, pinpoint of where your field is. We put in hail sensors. We then say to you, okay, what's, when is hail season in Colorado? And they may say, now I'm just making this up as an example because I, we're just learning how to get into this, October through March. Okay, we want to ensure October through March. And I said, what's this field worth? if you get a hailstorm and all your plants go down. And they may say, not, I'm not looking at pro 
a profit. I'm just saying what's, you know, the cost the when it's harvest. Right. So they can say, oh, $50,000, just as an example. So we're going from October to March. We're insuring $50,000 against a hail, named hailstorm. And we will also then gauge the percentage of the loss based on the size of the hail balls. And where you are in comparison to that hailstorm. So the hail sensors in the field give us all the data we need. Hailstorm comes through and let's say they're uh, half inch hail balls. We know exactly how much we're gonna pay out for a field that got hit by hail, half inch hail balls. Not only that, we're gonna pay you within five days. Because wow. the data, because the data says we know from the weather satellites, a hailstorm came through here and destroyed this field. Or it might not even have hit your field. You might not have damage, may have been a half a mile away. You're still gonna get paid because you were in the ring of potential damage. Now, take that one step further. After these fires calm down, next year we're gonna look at being able to provide crop insurance in Washington, Oregon, and California where now we're able to provide fire insurance or crop insurance against fire. Um, so that should be interesting to see how those premiums are rated based on this year. But there are certain companies willing to fund these type of risks. Now, there are additional advantages, except including on top of, you know, being paid out that fast within five, three to five business days or whatever your policy uh, dictates. But also, you're using real-time data instead of actuarial data. You're using technology instead of a person. Technology costs a lot less than a, keeping a person hired, so it saves down on administrative costs. No, 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 we can get you a quote in 24 hours once you give us very, you know, very limited data. Because That's once awesome. we know where you are and the coordinates of your field, from there, we do all the, the, the research and look at the indexes. And all the capture, calculation, and the payout, since it's all pretty much technologically automated, um, it's a much more efficient process, thereby... It, you're getting paid out faster. It's just, that's, I mean, I know everybody loves getting paid quickly, which is nice. So going back to the that, me being the simpleton, this seems almost like a super advanced version of like when you go for car insurance, that's that app that Progressive gives you that tells you if you're a good driver or not, right? It seems like this is a much real world business example of that where you're actually taking real time data and customizing all the policies based on that. Am I kind of on the right track there? Yeah, no, yeah. that will be the future of cannabis insurance because, yeah. you know, we're just seeing too, so many iterations of the business model from vertical states like here in, in Florida to, you know, open states on the West Coast where, you know, you could be a processor in a dispensary, you could be a grow in a dispensary, you could be, you know, so we see a lot of different iterations of how companies operate. Um, another thing as an alternative risk solution is a captive insurance. And what a captive insurance is. See, now I'm able to ask you, you know, I don't know what it is. So thank you. I know, <laughs> I'm just, I gotta help you along. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, is where you, you're, the company want to bet on yourself. And so what do you do? You work through insurance companies like, or brokers like myself, and we help you set up a captive. And what is a captive? You as a company set up your own insurance company. And we have an actuary look at all your risks and we price your risk. And we you are able to fund your own insurance company. So this is good for companies, public companies, private companies have a lot of uh, uh, cash retention. And what you're basically able to do, instead of paying 
insurance company's premiums as an expense, you're now paying your own insurance company that expense. And now it goes on your balance sheet because you actually own that insurance company. Interesting. And so now you can buy upper limits by within your captive policy, you can buy reinsurance. So although you may have maybe $2 million sitting in your own little insurance company, you can take some of that money and buy reinsurance. And now you got actually $10 million worth of exposure. And so this allows you now to say, okay, I want to insure risk that I could never insure before. I want to insure all my crop or I want to insure, uh, you know, a delivery service that I want to start up or my workers comp rates are costing me too much. We'll self insure and get a third party administrator to run the program for us. But we use our own money within our own captive to pay any claims. And so what happens was once you form a captive, you are then put in a pool of other industries and other captives into a bigger pool. So now let's say you have a million dollar claim. You're responsible for 20% of that claim in the pool that you belong to, they're paying the other 80%. So that's the law of large numbers. Now, you as a captive, you also have to contribute to the big pool based on all those other companies having claims. But it, you're only paying a small fraction of a large pool. So the exposure is not as bad. So when you set up a captive, you want to be considered a, a really a, a premier company that doesn't have claims. Because the more you can pool good companies without claims, the healthier the pool is going to be. If you have a couple of companies that are constantly putting in claims, then it poisons the pool. So yeah. there's a lot of, so we really need, when we get involved with companies who are spending a half a million dollars or more on insurance premiums, that's when they should be calling us to help them look at, should they look at a captive and what are the advantages the captive will provide for them. Well, let, let, me, let me ask this question because you said people calling you and asking if they should look at a captive. I actually imagine in a lot of scenarios, they're meeting with you and you guys are, are bringing this to their attention because maybe it's just me, but these are things that are, are brand new to me and they're extremely interesting the way that it's structured. And they're it easy seems to me set up. Yeah. They're easy to set up. Doesn't take a lot of uh, um, underwriting, but it does require you to get your legal team, your accounting, your financial advisors. And if you have a board of directors, the board to vote on it because it's an important event within the company. Especially how it pertains to your business and to your risk. Um, both parametrics and captive insurance are very bespoke, meaning that 100% of the policy is tailored to your business and not to anybody else's business or to a similar business. It is completely bespoke to you which gives you that, you know, that sense of affirmation and value that you're going to be covered. And unlike your bespoke suits, if you put on the COVID-19, they will still fit you. So that's my Absolutely. attempt to humor there. <laughs> um, listen, it sounds like both parametric and captive is perfect for this industry. And, you know, we always joke around in every industry, they say, our industry is different. Our industry is different. Well, the cannabis industry is different because of the rules and regulations. It seems like both of these products are, are great for this industry. I mean, is this a lot of what the people that you're talking to are looking at right now? Yeah, we're rolling out, you know, a big marketing uh, effort to get the word out. But it seems that this is what we've been hearing from our clients for quite a while. So we're happy to be able to present it to them. And we want to branch out. We work with other brokers across the country, work with clients across the U.S. and also in Canada. You know, we do a lot of cross-border deals. That's where this uh, captive uh, market really is going to be helpful because most of these public companies are Canadian public companies, but have U.S. operations. 
it makes it a lot more difficult. And when you talked about the complexity of our industry, this is probably one of the most complex parts of it, the way these companies are structured. And traditional insurance companies just don't understand cross-border deals. You know, they want to insure the warehouse down the street or, you know, this supermarket over there. You know, they're not ready to handle the cannabis industry. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem it. Like, so I, I'm still fixated on the, the parametric and the captive. So I'm going to take a wild guess here. It seems like these are two good products and almost to me, is as you're up and coming and growing, that parametric is a better solution because it will fit your needs with real-time data. And then as you become the larger, more established company and you can do the captive, that that's a better, like for a multi-state operator product there, I could be completely wrong, but based on what I am trying to learn, that would be my assumption. No, yeah. you're getting it. Yeah, it's, if you're a successful company, you have excess cash and you have low claims, this is a perfect vehicle uh, to bet on yourself. Uh, a lot of high risk, low frequency. Right. And when it comes to the parametrics, you know, the, the beauty, beautiful part of that I like is you're not paying for crop insurance all year round. You're betting on those times of year that you know you're at risk. And during the cycle of your growth when you're at the most risk. So. You know, the nice part is you pick your dates and you pick the amount. And so, you know, we'll come back, give you a rate, and you either can bet, take that bet or not. You, you guys are just bringing insurance all the way into the 21st century. Wait, what century? 22nd century, maybe? I think 21st century yeah, is the same. But <laughs> I, I don't know time or space, considering since we've been in the pandemic. But no, I mean, this, these products sound perfect for our industry and I love the bespoke aspect of it. And I love to see the fact that so many companies are innovating and even you guys just discovering these things for this industry. It's perfect. And I think a lot of that has to do with your knowledge. Um, is there anything else from the insurance standpoint that other companies should be looking at, should be aware of, or you know, at the very least asking the people that they're insured by right now? I think the best solution, best answer to that question is to really get in touch with us, to really give us a call, pick up that phone, shoot us an email. Um, our phone and email address are on our website, s2sinsure.com. Also with our socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're also on LeafWire. And that's where we can really get into the nitty gritty about what you need covered and, and what even sort of even products you have you have insurance, you know, We'll tell you straight up, either you got a good policy or here's the issues you have and you really should, you know, look into these other uh, coverages. Um, there's good, there's good insurance companies servicing the industry. There's, you know, some mediocre and then there's, People you know, who are just selling you a piece of paper and it does nothing. Yeah. And that's something we always try to avoid here and we try to make sure that everybody Absolutely. else can. Yeah, yes. exactly. So cool, again, man. it just comes down to basic business fundamentals. And, you know, like I said, when we all like banking, insurance is just one of those things that is the pillar of your, your company. I mean, it's there to support you when you need it. And hopefully you um, don't need it. Well, if you're going to take the risk and build your own company, especially in this space, I think it's, it's a necessity to make sure that you're protected because of all the outside factors. Taking you guys out of your comfort zone, outside of what you do for a living, what are some of the things that you're excited about in the industry that's coming up? Just give me, because I know you guys are so in tune with it. Is there anything that's excited you? Besides maybe the fact that the MORE Act is actually getting some support, which is blowing my mind, what, what are you guys excited about? Or you can take that one. I know I just took it out of your hands. Um, you know, we're seeing an emerging psilocybin industry uh, that's trying to follow on the foothills of the cannabis industry. Um, it's a little more regulated with, uh, you know, scientific study, but I think the results of what they're going after are going to be very beneficial. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm excited just to see how we get through 2020. Yes. That's, 
that's definitely first and foremost. Second, um, we really need to see some sort of federal plan to get this, get these products into the hands of the people that really need it, especially in those states that can't provide some sort of cannabis or CBD solution. Um, we really need to change that. Well, I think, you know, we have to hope in, that uh, there's a change in the Senate yeah. so some of these bills can get passed. I mean, a lot of, and it's not just our bills, it's all bills have been backed up for quite a while. Um, you know, so we have to look at it from the top down and the bottom up. Right, you gotta, uh, see, you gotta, you gotta face it at, at, at all facets. You know, on a national level, again, we're looking for the SAFE Act and the Mo uh, MORE Act to pass. Uh, from the bottom up, you know, I just, my heart goes out to all those growers out in California, Oregon, and Washington and with these raging fires. I mean, I have clients sending me pictures of the smoke filled air and Oof. it's just, it's just brutal. So yeah. to all, all my West Coast clients, uh, our hearts go out for you. It looks like, I mean, out there, I've seen these pictures. It looks like the sun is like an egg yolk and somebody just yeah. poked the egg yolk and now the entire sky looks, just looks like the sun. Golden yeah, I've seen those pictures. It's 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 not pretty out there, and you know we we give our 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 thoughts and prayers to them out there, and hopefully things get better. They've been through enough, certainly. Um, we haven't had to go through as much on the East Coast, but yeah, guys. I mean, listen, we've known each other for a while. I'm super excited for hopefully, you know, we're seeing the numbers go down in Florida. Maybe we'll actually be able to have some sort of conference or in-person event, and we all get to hang out again. Of course, we'll uh, probably not be passing around too much stuff, but it, it, it's going to be exciting to see everybody again. I'm looking forward to it. Um, before I let you guys go, is there anything else that we want to talk about that I might have missed? Our website, again, is www.s2sinsure.com. All of our pertinent contact information is on the website, as well as the description of all the coverages we provide. Eric? Hey. To all our C Lab friends and uh, Todd, thanks for putting this together. So we much, really, Todd. Appreciate, we really it. appreciate it. And hey, good luck with your uh, your new gig. Thank you very much. Let me actually address that. So, for those of you who don't know, I do this show for fun. This is something I do on the side. I recently took a position with Spring Big right here in Boca Raton, Florida. They're one of the top technology companies in the cannabis space. I'm very excited about it. Um, I will try not to decorate this pod podcast with them too much, but it is something I'm excited about. Hopefully we can keep the purity of this going. This has been fun. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I'm going to continue to do this show because I get to hang out with my friends here and everybody gets to learn something and enjoy it. So gentlemen, thank you so much for giving me the education. I hope everybody else learned alongside with me. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you guys in person again soon. Can't wait to see you too. Thanks so much, Todd. Thanks, Todd. Absolutely. And we might have to, we might have to do another lunch at BurgerFi before we come back just because yeah, I love yeah. No problem. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, thank you, guys. And thank you, everybody at home for watching again. This has been another episode of Elevate Your Grind. We are going to be live next Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. These are going to be at 6.30 p.m. for a while while I feel out my schedule, and then we'll get a regular scheduled program again. Um, and then this Thursday at 4.20 p.m., check out our cannabis banking panel called Take My Money, hosted by Zach Coburn from Ackerman. That's going to be a great one. Go to joincelab.com to check that out. This has been another episode of Elevate Your Grind. We're out.